Hello everyone, uh, Russell here again and uh, this video I wanted to explore the different drummer waves and the uh, means to manipulate those. Um, the waves themselves are at the heart of different drummers so um, uh, quite a in-depth uh, topic and I won't be covering some of the more advanced functions but uh, uh, hopefully covering uh, enough to make this uh, valuable for, for many. Uh, so I'm going to start off with uh, launching a new set, and I created a wave demo set previously. You can see I'm just using one track here, and I am um, on using 16th notes uh, and with no rest, and so you see a continual 16th note hammering away here. Um, and I'm in grid mode. So, and using a piano. Um, and in fact, before we start, I'm going to go ahead and show how to bring in a, a, a different sample here. I'm going to click on the blue plus icon here and click on the audio share icon. And I had previously created one from the DRC app, and I'm just going to input that into different drummer. So now I can close out of here and I could scroll to the question mark icon. These icons, uh, vertical icons on the left here uh, of that uh, window are uh, get you into the different categories quickly. So here I'm going to select DRC Bass. And so that's what we're using here. I'm also using, going to use a, um, I'm not going to set the scale and, and modes here. What I'm going to do is I'm going to go to the progression here and just set a C major chord. Commit that and close it. And I did that because I wanted to show that uh, now you're going to be constrained to uh, notes just using the C major chord. So C, the notes C, E, and G. So you, you can see that it's going to go through those notes, di different octaves of, of that note. Okay, and then I could just draw that whole thing in there. But now if I start applying the sliders to adjust the waves, it's going to snap those notes to the slider. So let me put this back to a full sine wave. Um, these buttons right here give you a full sine wave, or here it mirrors the uh, second half of the sine wave, and here it flattens out the second half of the sine wave. Um, I'm going to actually use a square wave because I think that's going to uh, make this a little bit more apparent what I'm doing here. Note that there's a lot of interaction between the waves, uh, the sliders themselves, the note beat value here being at 16th notes, and the CPM. Um, so all of those interact together. Uh, here I'm going to um, well, as you can see, as I adjust the amplitude of my 1F slider, what that is doing is it is a multiplier of the carrier wave. And the carrier wave is whatever is set up here in the CPM box. Now that CPM box converts to, uh, um, I can't remember the MPCs, um, measures per something. <laughs> can't remember the, the terminology, I apologize. Uh, so you could uh, adjust the CPM and then these sliders then are multiples of that carrier. So starting with the defaults, you've got a 0.5, uh, a 1, 2, 3, 4, and, uh, and 5, and 6. And you could aggregate them. So here you could see what happens if I add the 3 times the carrier uh, multiple into the mix here. Also these buttons down below will give you the ability to go flatten it. Now this converts it back over to sine wave or a 1x multiple that sort of thing. Um, keep in mind too that I'm at two cycles per measure up here. Let me go back to one one and a half. Let me go back to a square wave and you can see as I step through each of the measures in here uh, it's repeating like a, a, a mirror image. Um, 
I'm not sure why that one dropped off. Oh yeah, yeah. I noticed that a little bit of a problem with that when the phase was right at zero. It seems to work better at 1.5. So let me change that here. Now that's still dropping off where at that point. I'm, I'm not clear on what's causing that. Okay, so as I adjust the amplitude, you'll see more variation. Um, also, you're not stuck with these multipliers or the wave shapes for any of these sliders. You click on the, the F button over here and you could determine whether your amplitude is going to be additive or subtractive into the mix and set that specifically to a, to a specific value. As you can see, that matches up with what's in my slider view as well. And you could change the frequency and the wave shape here. So if I wanted to, I could make this um, 12 times the frequency and I can make this a sawtooth. And you have to hit OK to commit that. So here is that mixed with the 2F slider, uh, with 2F slider being uh, uh, specifically a square wave, and the 12F slider now being a, uh, um, a sawtooth wave. Okay, um, now these die down here will affect, the single die will affect, in this case, the note wave and randomize that. The double die will will affect all the parameters uh, for this particular track. So note waves, rest waves, uh, the ties. Um, let me go ahead and reset these back to zeros. And sometimes even after doing that, you have to go back into the rest wave and I'm still getting something that's, uh, as you can tell by the different coloration there, something's still kind of off, but okay. So, um, let's go back here and, um, on the phase wave, like I said, that's just uh, setting the start point of that wave. And I wanted to be at 1.5 because that didn't seem to sync up just right. Um, uh, but you also have the ability to slide left and right on the phase slider there. Um, and you could also do that, oops, sorry about that, with the, uh, circles at the extremes there. And that's going to change the phase by a preset amount, either uh, uh, at a beat value or, or you could actually put it to one degree. So um, right now it's set to 16th notes. So every time I change the phase, it's changing it by a 16th beat. Okay, so let's just see what we could do to make this a little bit interesting here. Um, Okay, so this reset back to a sine wave here. I'm gonna I'm gonna change this to a sawtooth wave. Let's add some rest into this. Okay, now the rest, anything above the zero crossing line is gonna carve out a rest. So you're gonna actually mute that uh, that note if there's a note that's in place there. Uh, the ties are going to tie notes, adjacent notes together. So if you have a uh, two adjacent notes, it's going to act like a sustain or a legato. Uh, now the AB switch here will, will tie, will sustain the first note even if the second note is at a different pitch. Um, whereas the A setting, and I may have this backwards, but uh, that's the, the general idea, that if, if the notes have to be at the same pitch before it ties them together in one setting, but in the other setting, they don't have to. Now these A and B uh, uh, settings in these other uh, 
wave types don't uh, have, or, or, or some of the advanced things I'm, I'm not going to go into, mainly because I don't understand them that well. But uh, So here you also have volume or dynamics. So uh, here you can see that that gives uh, uh, the ability to accent notes. Uh, and you could actually use this Y slider in not only your dynamics wave, but the ties and rest and, and all, all the wave types uh, to set the vertical position, the Y axis. So it changes where the zero crossing occurs. In fact, if you drop it down, it's, you're not, you're not going to get anything. Okay. Um, I'm just trying to think of what else I wanted to talk to you about in this. Um, as I mentioned, uh, uh, the you've got an invert button right here, so that inverts it. And then this group of cluster of three buttons here, you either have it where it does goes through the full cycle of the wave, or it mirrors the second half, or it flattens the second half. So between all these different wave manipulation tools, you could pretty much, and, and the fact that you could apply this to the rest, the pitch, uh, the notes, and the ties, and, and the dynamics. Uh, you could pretty much get anything you could imagine and a lot of things you can't imagine. So I uh, hope this was helpful. Uh, this is all, I also want to point out, this was also focused on the grid mode. I don't want to get into the non-grid mode. Uh, that's something I need to study up a little bit more on. Um, I did want to add though, once you start um, adding other tracks here, and I'll throw the snare in here in grid mode. Let's say I like the rest here. You can copy that and then go back to the snare track and now you're applying that same rest to the snare track. And on the visualizer up above, you could see where how that's playing into it, where you're going to get beats from the snare and the DRC bass on the same same beat, um, although not entirely because we also have notes that are, uh, uh, appear in different places between the two as well. Uh, but now that I've done that, I could also phase shift this to add a little bit more variation and interest. And the other thing I wanted to mention was the number of measures. So currently both tracks are set for four measures. Um, what I find interesting is let me change this to five measures and often when you do this you have to change your rest wave slightly because you, as you can see my last two measures are are blank so I just did a minor bump on on the 2f slider there and and so now I've got five measures of the snare four of the DRC bass and when you start doing that across eight tracks, you get to the point where there's not going to be any repetition whatsoever because now you've got one track running for five measures before it loops and one running for four before it loops. So that is uh, actually a, a pretty interesting uh, uh, technique for, for making sure that uh, uh, you've got variation uh, throughout the entire composition. Anyway, if you have any questions, oh, I did want to show also uh, one other thing here. Uh, let's change our, um, go back to our, our DRC base, and we look at the notes, and I'm going to change this slider. I'm going to change the whole thing to, to a square wave. Uh, you also have the ability to do pulse waves by sliding vertically on the uh, pulse icon right below it. And then if you phase shift that too, it's going to follow within different points of, uh, of the phase as well, so uh, of the wave itself. Okay, so. Uh, I think that's all I, I got time for for today. Uh, as always, if you have any questions, feel free to leave them in the comments or or shoot me a message on AudioBus forum. I hope this helps. Thanks. <laughs>